Hi, welcome to another video. Microsoft has been on a roll recently. First, they upgraded VS Code to beat Cursor. And now it seems they are back again with a great new AI agent called Magentic One. This is an AI agent that can do general purpose tasks based on a prompt, just like Open Interpreter or other agents that I have covered. They say that it's a generalist multi-agent system for solving complex tasks. So, as they say, it's a multi-agent system instead of one agent. It has about five agents that do the tasks for you. First of all, there's the orchestrator agent. This is the main agent which takes your response, delegates those responses to other agents, monitors them, and when they are done, gives you the response. It's like the boss. But under that agent, you have multiple agents like the Web Surfer agent. The Web Surfer agent is an LLM-based agent proficient in commanding and managing the state of a Chromium-based web browser. With each incoming request, the Web Surfer performs an action on the browser and then reports on the new state of the web page. The action space of the Web Surfer includes navigation, web page actions, and reading actions. Basically, it can control a whole Chromium browser via Playwright and use that to perform actions based on your prompt. If you don't know about Playwright, it's a library that allows you to control a browser via quite simple lines of code. Anyway, apart from the Web Surfer agent, we also have the File Surfer agent. This is also an LLM based agent that commands a Markdown based file preview application to read local files of most types. It can do all the basic file navigation tasks and things like that. So, it can access your computer files if you want. It also has a coder agent specialized through its system prompt for writing code, analyzing information collected from other agents, or creating new artifacts. Apart from this, there's also a terminal agent that gives all the other agents the power to execute terminal commands, which also seems pretty good, to be honest. They have also shared some evaluations for it as well. And I actually never thought that I'd see humans as data in a chart. But here we are, I guess. Anyway, it's pretty good in the benchmarks as well. It won't beat humans, but it's still at a quarter level. So, be aware, humans. Anyway, it is based on the Autogen framework by Microsoft, which they released quite a while back as an agentic framework. Now, it technically only supports GPT-4.0 and OpenAI APIs, but I'll tell you how you can use it with the GitHub Models API and use it with GPT-4.0 for free. I'll also tell you how you can use it with any OpenAI-compatible API if you want to, maybe use Open Router, Together AI, or even local Olama models. So, let's get into it. First of all, you'll need to go to the Autogen repo, and then you'll need to go to this path. I'll link it in the description. Now, first of all, copy this git clone command. Just run it on your computer and get it cloned. Now, once you have cloned it, first, Go to the Python folder inside the Autogen repo that we just cloned. Now, you'll need to first install the UV package with pip. Once you do that, you'll need to run the virtual environment that it has by using the source command like this. Once you do that, you'll get into the virtual environment, and you'll need to run this command every time that you want to run it. So, make sure that you do this setup of going to the Python directory and switching to the virtual environment with this command. Once done, just cd into the folder mentioned, which is this. Now, once you are here, you'll need to add two environment variables. First is the chat completion provider, and you can choose between two providers, the Azure option and the OpenAI option. Generally, everyone will select OpenAI. So, 
just create the environment variable with the export command like this. Or if you're on Windows, just replace the export command with setx. Once done, we'll need to export the next environment variable with the API keys and model name as a JSON array within one variable. So, you'll have the API key here and the model name, then just export your variable like this. But, as I said, we'll be using it with GPT-40 from GitHub Models because we all want to use it for free. So, just get your GitHub Models API key for free, and once you have that, just add another element in the JSON array like this, with the base URL as an element name, and the URL from GitHub Models, which is generally this. Then, enter the GitHub API key, save it, and you should be able to use it. If you want to use any other OpenAI compatible API, you can also do that quite easily here, like Together AI or even Olama. Apparently, Gemini now has an OpenAI compatible API, so you should also be able to use that with it without much hassle. Anyway, once you have that set up, you can use it by running the example Python file, as it has everything implemented. I won't go into the code details but I may upload a code breakdown of it in the Members Only section. So, you can become a member and check that out if needed. It has a bunch of other videos as well, like the latest Dockling tutorial, and starts from only $5, which also supports the channel. Anyway, just run the example Python file, and once you do that, you'll be asked for a prompt. Let's start with something simple because it says that it can code, run the code, and interpret results from it, let's ask it to create a Python program that generates a random number and then report that back to us. I'm just doing this to check if it can run Python programs, take the output, and do something with it or not. Okay, it's doing that. Let's wait a bit. and it's now done. So, it worked pretty well. It ran the program, and the number it produced is here. So, it can do that, which is already better than a bunch of other agents. Now, let's go a little more complex. Let's ask it to tell me the current NVIDIA stock price. Okay, it's doing that now. Let's wait a bit. And it's now done. It did this really well. And the price here is also correct. It was actually relatively fast compared to what I have seen before. So it's really usable and very reliable. It can also apparently read files. So, I have this research paper converted to Markdown about Magentic itself. I converted it using Dockling. And you can also do that by just running Dockling and the file name. Anyway. Let's just ask it to take that file and summarize it for me. Okay, it's doing that now. Let's wait a bit. And it's now done. So, it did that as well. I also tried to ask it to make a file as well, but it fails to do so. And Magentic doesn't say that it can do that either, so that's fine. I think this is a great agent for sure. I mean, it can do what it says, and it's pretty reliable from what I can see. It's better than almost every other AI agent that I have ever seen. Another thing that I wanted to see was if it could read and summarize some stuff for me. So, I asked it for the recent Gemini 2 news that has been floating around. It searched the web for that as well, 
and gave the correctish response, and I find that it's good. It can also apparently click on web pages and navigate through there as well. I think this is pretty good. It's literally one of the most reliable agents I've seen in a while. I may just keep it above every other one, including the computer use agent, because this is much faster and it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Plus, it's actually usable for quite a bit of tasks that you may want to do with it, and you can also implement it in your own application if you want, because it's all simple code. This is a really good agent. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked this video, consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can also consider becoming a member by clicking the join button. Also, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.